you join me at a crucial moment in the Big Brother studio. Uh, pull off a bit of a coup. Big Brother doesn't know about this. We're actually inside the Big Brother bed set. I'm going to show you everything. We're going to have a look around. We're going to see what they're going to be doing. Hang on a sec. What's that? I'm, I'm just inside a cardboard box. And it's not the Big Brother bed set. <laughs> it's embarrassing, honestly. We're going to see the bed set. Fine. Let me assure you, someone's pulled the wool over our eyes. We'll be seeing the Big Brother bed set. And there's nothing a nitwits upstairs can do about it. Hey, you. Welcome to Big Brother's Little Brother. I hope you're very well. Coming up on the show today, Lady puts a snap, crackle and hot world into Sunday morning. So we'll be looking through the housemates' vocal talents. That lady is Makita the Oliver. Big Brother series producer Simon Welton is in. He's going to be telling us exactly about these bedsit shenanigans. And psychologist Dr Rob Young is here to talk through how the secret bedsit will affect both the imprisoned housemates and those left behind. But we kick off with Little Brother's Big News. OK, 11.47 this morning. Ahmed lost it. Enormously. Uh, with some of the housemates still in bed, Big Brother decides to wake them up with the sound of a car alarm, as they always do. After 16 minutes, the man from Somalia finally decided he had enough. Oh! 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 So stupid. Yeah, you are stupid. What's got to do with you? Hate to wake him up. Love him at a Greek wedding. Uh, after venting his anger, Ahmed went into the snug for a tearful 83 minutes. I don't like this. Take a look. And finally, at 2.25 this afternoon, the housemates made a new friend in the garden. Aww. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Crazy guys. Uh, that was Little Brother's big news. There has been a lot of harsh words going on in the Big Brother house over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I'm not happy about it. Examples include Emma moaning about Victor, Jason's been moaning about Michelle, and everyone's been moaning about Ahmed. Uh, all behind their backs. With that in mind, today's cool BBLB could only be who's the biggest backstabber in the house. Here's how to get in touch. <laughs> You can call BBLB on 090 That's 090 Or you can text us your comments. Just put studio, then a space, then your message, and then send it to 83188. Or you can email us at bblb at channel4.com. Yikes. On yesterday's BBLB, we announced that not one person is going to get evicted from the Big Brother house this week. Instead, two people are going to be going into the Big Brother bed set. Going to be working for Big Brother, spying on the other housemates. But what are they going to be doing? How long are they going to be in there? And how will they enact any form of revenge? Here to tell us is Big Brother series producer, Simon Walton. Hi, Simon. Hello. So, the sketch is what? The sketch is that on Friday night, uh, two people will leave the house. Uh, think, think they're going to be evicted? Think they're going to be evicted. Actually, what they'll do is they'll turn up in the bed sit. So, I mean, how are you going to break... Do you, are you going to break it to them, or, or will they just be ushered in there? Uh, they'll just be ushered in. Basically, they'll leave by the door, as they saw Kitten do last week, but then they'll be taken through the Camerons and 
into the bed sitter. And then you explain the situation to them? Yeah, there'll be a laminate in there that will tell them what's going on. Excellent. Mm. And what happens to the other person? The other person will remain in the house and uh, they're, you know, they'll face nomination and eviction next week like everybody else. OK, so you're going to show us exactly where this bed sit of yours yes. is. Um, now, I think what's most exciting about this is it's so close to... Uh, to the other rooms in the house. Before we go any further, you've got, you've got Son of Torchy yeah. Torch, I am in fact Torchy Torch, on in three, two, one, ignite. Excellent. Okay, uh, come with. Show me, uh, show me exactly, okay. exactly where it is here. Okay, well there's the, there's the actual house. We can see the kitchen through there, right? Yeah, that's the kitchen through there, so they're literally only gonna be about 20 feet away, I'd say. So we don't want to disturb those cameramen working, so let's, let's come over here. now. Here it is. This is the bed set. Now, as excited as I am uh, that we're seeing this, uh, it, is, it is a bit rubbish. Basic, I think, is a fairer term. I mean, the thing is, are people supposed to come in here and resent the fact they're in here? Is that the reason why you've done it so there's no natural light and there's no garden and so forth? I'm not sure if they'll resent the fact they're in here. To be honest, they'll probably be very glad that they haven't actually been evicted, so yeah. I'd imagine that will tide them over. OK, talk us through it. OK, well, there's a little phone there. Uh, that's what Big Brother can talk to the housemates on. Yep. Uh, the bed there, small, but, you know, still a bed. Uh, toilet and shower room. You've got a kitchen area, a little dining area. Will they, will, they, will they have to cook for themselves or will they be fed or how's it going to work? I think they'll probably have to cook for themselves, but who knows what will happen. Uh, and one thing is they've got a TV just in that I was going to ask, now that's, is, I presume, that's for them to spy on the other people. It is, yeah, they'll be able to sit and watch the house. house. Will it be a case that you know, they won't have any option but to spy on them? Well, there's not an awful lot to do in there, so probably, <laughs> probably they might end up doing it quite a bit, yeah. OK. So they essentially can see what people are saying about them and, mm. and how people are acting yeah. you know, in their absence. Yeah, exactly. And then what happens? Then they go back in, right? They will go back in eventually, yeah. But in the meantime, you know, depending on what they see, they can decide to punish or reward with the housemates as they see fit. He's evil. So when are they going back in? Can't tell you that. Mm, go on. Yeah. Over days or weeks? Not saying. Mm-hmm. Right, you're mean. Turn, turn face to corner. Okay. Okay. So, uh, three people are up for eviction. But two of them are going in this little room, and you decide who. These are the numbers to call. Message ends. Torchy torch out. Two vote for Ahmed. Dial 09011 214401 or text Ahmed to 84444. To vote for Emma, dial 09011 214403. Or text Emma, 84444. To vote for Michelle, dial 09011 214407. Or text Michelle, 84444. So, to recap, no one's getting evicted. Two people are going into the bed sit. This is a genius thing about it, is while they're in the, they're in the bed sit, they get to nominate. Yes! <gasps> Certainly will provoke an explosive situation in the house. To analyse this for us, please welcome Dr Rob Young. Hi. Hello, Dr Rob. How are you? I'm pretty good, thanks. Now, you're going to cast your psychological eye over everything, and we appreciate that. Um, three possible combinations to go into the bed. Emma and Ahmed, Emma and Michelle, Michelle and Ahmed. Who and why are the worst people to go in there or the best people to go in there? I think the most interesting will be Michelle and Emma because Ahmed is actually quite introverted. Mm -hmm. So if he were to go into that bed sit, he'll just sit there quietly, Ooh. taking it all in, not really saying much, being quite resigned to the fact that people don't like him. Well, we saw him earlier on today just throwing plates around. That was while he was in the house. If he goes into that bed sit, he's going to go absolutely ballistic, isn't he? Uh, possibly, but I think, you know, sort of he's just kind of leaking certain behaviours at the moment. Yeah. But in the bed sit, he'll just kind of go quiet because there'll be you nothing to antagonise him. You think he'll sleep in there, don't you? Yeah, he'll just go to bed. OK, well, here's what the three of them have had to say about each other so far. Take a look. After the row, Emma also, she was trying to be very nice. But can I trust her? No, she tried. No. <laughs> no. It's the, it's I cannot the... switch like that, you know. Having a row with someone, especially if someone thinks that they have more rights than you, that they are superior to you. Like, I don't know what Hamid brings to the group. Did, did you enjoy his meal today? Not rice, I'm sorry, like, but everybody was going, mmm, it's so good, so good. To me, it just didn't taste like anything. I tried with, with Michelle, and she, she nearly blanked me, because when she told me that she was from Newcastle, I tried to talk about her city, but there was no eye contact, there was nothing. It seems to me that any pairing would be quite sort of incendiary. I mean, Ahmed really obviously doesn't seem to particularly gel with either of them. Mm. Wouldn't it be quite fun if we, if, you know, if we end up seeing him and 
one of the girls in there? Well, I think you're right. Any of those pairings will be quite interesting because essentially they do, just don't get on with each other. But the best two, I think, will be Michelle and they don't get They're not too bad, are they? Well, they'll bond. Uh, you know, they're about a similar age, they're both women, so they will actually just talk to each other more and come up with some Machiavellian plan, maybe, when they get back into that house. Whoever they are, they've all got the share of bed. If the girls are in there together, they could sing themselves to death as well, which we're obviously slightly worried about. We'll be onto that later on. Um, how much worse do you think it'll be, you know, living in that small space? I mean, do you think people will bond, or do you think there's a chance that they'll just go absolutely ballistic and, and then they'll end up nominating each other when they get out? I think that that tiny, tiny little bed sit will drive people crazy. You don't have anywhere to get away. You can't go talk to someone mm-hmm. else and vent your frustration and backstab. Um, so it will be a, an even more pressurised environment. So when sure. they get back into the house, they'll actually feel quite glad. No natural light's going to just drive That's them a real, as well, isn't it? Yeah. OK, um, let's turn our attention to the housemates that are going to be left behind. They've already had a few uh, words to say about the chosen three. These are the thought of things I've been saying. We'll start with um, the guys talking about Emma. She doesn't think before she speaks, like, that's it. quite clearly. No, that's, yeah, that's the way she is. It's, she's, I, I, I don't like her, her sort of actions and her, her, her chat is just like, whatever comes into her head, man. Woof, woof, exactly. There's no, there's no thought. I don't even think Michelle's that hectic. Mm. I think she's just quite dull. I've got to do something with people. Yeah. So sort he of keeps her little group. Yeah. And not allowed to get yeah. in there. Wacky army. <laughs> <laughs> He's got mental, isn't it? The thing is, what, yeah, he hasn't I think he's, uh, he hasn't done anything for like seven days, he... and then all of a sudden he gets nominated, and he's like, <gasps> I think he's happy. I think he's happy because he wants to go. I love the way Michelle just like, stuck that in there at the end. Oh, I think he's happy to be nominated because he wants to go, and I'm up for nomination as well. Yeah, it's um, those plan. are the sort of things they're going to be going to be hearing over the next week. Mm. Um, how do you think that will affect them? I mean, how do you think that's going to be when they come back in? Well, it's gutting. Uh, you, you're always happy to talk about other people behind their backs, but you always assume that everyone thinks yes, you're lovely yeah. uh, and that no one's sniping behind your back. Mm-hmm. So it'll be like a, a knife in the, in the chest, really, when they get back. I mean, in. do you think they'll, they'll, they'll moan about them after they've gone? I mean, do you think this could actually, in a weird way, do you think this could backfire on Big Brother? Do you think they'll be actually quite nice about them after they left, or do you think the, the daggers will no, be? No, what do you think? But no one's nice in Big Brother. Um, people. <laughs> your word's not mine! People will get back into that house and they will be really annoyed. They are going to have heard everything that's said about them, and especially Michelle, she'll log it and she'll use it. Well, well what about the housemates? Because when they see these two come back in, they'll be really weirded out by that, and that'll make them even more paranoid, I imagine, right? Well, I think some of them might actually feel that Big Brother has cheated because it's a game, and they'll think, hang on, Big Brother's changed the rules. Yeah. We, we weren't warned about this. So first they'll feel shocked, but then a couple of them will just feel really worried about what they've been saying in the previous week. Finally, I know you're a psychologist, but I want to get onto a bit of love action. Uh, if Michelle goes, how will Stuart react? More importantly, how will he react when she comes back? Well, when she goes, I think he actually might be a bit relieved. Do you? Yeah. I think he cynic? Can, I think he can do better. Uh, so he'll he be, can do better? Yeah, so, so he can... You're not his mum. Uh, so, so he will be able to, you know, breathe a deep sigh of relief. And okay. when she comes back, he'll regret the kind of things that he might have said about her while she's been gone. And she could nominate him while she's in there if you're saying nasty things as well. Indeed. Thank you very much. OK, that's all happening on Friday night. Dr Rob will be back for Call BBLB. And still to come, the First Lady of Pop World, Nikita Oliver, will be here. We'll see you in three. Welcome back to Big Brother's Little Brother. I hope you're very well. Still to come, cool BBLB. But right now, I want to get her opinions on what's been going on in the house so far. And indeed, the housemates' vocal talents. Please welcome Pop World's Makita Rollo, everybody. <laughs> I thought you said you were going to watch out for my feet. I was. I didn't hit them, did I? No. How are you? I'm very good. You must be enjoying it this year because you're here. Loving it. Loving every well, minute. What of do it. you like about it in particular? Um, uh, I quite fancy someone this year and I didn't last no year. No way. Who do you fancy this Stuart. year? Stuart. What do you fancy Stuart for? I don't know. I, think I like his long hair and his eyes are nice. So if he cut his hair off and we skew it out his eyes, you wouldn't like no, him that much No, not at all. Damn, OK. So um, obviously so I hate Michelle, then. Obviously, mm. you like him. Who's mm. been your least favourite, obviously, apart from Michelle? Um, my least favourite, apart from Michelle? Ahmed, but only because I, 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 it's kind of painful to watch him be left out of everything. Of his own accord, but it's just it's difficult to watch. OK, so he's difficult to watch. Do you have an active dislike for anyone? Yes, Michelle. Yeah, other than the fact, other than, other than 
No, this, everyone on... else I'm okay with. Okay, so he's just on the strength. Oh of yeah, no, Victor. Too. Okay. Don't like him. Why? Because he's righteous. He's funny though. No, he's not. Well, he is a little bit. I mean, no, I'm not he's saying not. we're laughing with him. But you know, it's because I know people like him. Like, just, I think he's like a sort of scared little boy and he comes Do you think off he takes himself that seriously, though? I mean... Yeah, I think he really does. That's why it's so scary. OK, cool. On Friday yeah. night, two housemates chosen from Ahmed, Emma and Michelle were placed yeah. in the secret bedsit, as you're well aware. Who do you want to see locked up together? Well, I want to get Michelle away from Stuart, for obvious reasons. Yeah, OK. <laughs> so, I'm picking up a uh, theme on this interview. Yeah. So, Michelle and... Uh, I don't want her to have a good time, so uh, stick with Ahmed, cos she's friends with Emma. You never know. They could... Uh, they her could and Ahmed bond. could even get it on. Well, she's a bit of... And that, yeah. le and that leaves a big lane for Expressway to stew, mm. Destination stew, population mm. you and him. Yeah. That's open for you. So then. there you go, that's what I want to have. Would you really want us to... We can probably sort of fix Could you hook it up? Yeah, I think so. He, <laughs> but when, he likes when, Michelle. When she comes out. No, he actually likes Michelle. Do you think he really likes I didn't her? think he did, and then he said, I like her when she calls me chicken. I was like, oh, right. And that's he likes that's only she, one tiny moment right, when he likes and, her, though, and, and he likes when she scrunches her nose. That's the type of thing. That's the type of little things you notice when you really like someone. Did you do chicken? Could you say chicken? I could call him chicken. Can you scrunch your nose? There we go. That's a, that's a marriage made in heaven, <laughs> I think. OK, uh, let's go on to this singing. We brought you here. We want to put you to good use. Okay. Um, your expert opinion on some of the housemates singing, all right? We've got right. three examples. First up, and I'm sure you'll love this, yeah. it's Michelle. Oh. Sing because I'm happy. Happy, and I sing because I'm free. Is I is on the sparrow. I'm not entirely sure which way we should go now with this interview. I want to get a reaction from you, but I'm just worried. <laughs> What's your reaction to the diva-esque Michelle I think it's, I think it's eyes blooming on painful. Yep. And I think that also... I think she's basically just saying, I want a record deal. And it's, it's quite early in the show for her to already be blaying out She should have just sung voice. that, shouldn't she? She should have just sung, I, I want, want a record, record deal. deal. And she's also doing that thing that only, like, you know, Whitney Houston and people like that can do, that whole up and down thing, up and down thing. Well, exactly. And mm. whereas Whitney carries on singing, she just breathes while yeah, she Yeah, yeah, she just does little pauses. <laughs> yeah, OK. She's not even doing it right. This should be fun as well. Um, next up's Victor. Oh, these are my favourite people. He's singing Don't Be Cruel by Bobby Brown. Oh, sing it. You know it ain't cool. I don't be cruel. Uh-uh. Cos I would never be that cruel to you. Uh-uh. Uh oh, 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 don't be cruel. Remember that song? Uh, uh. Um, I'm recognising it. <laughs> she really is. Oh, yeah, I know that. <laughs> that was like quite a sweet thing to do, actually. Yeah, I um, am recognising the thing, it. The thing about that uh, performance was that um, he wasn't putting his heart into it, and I know that Victor thinks he's got rhythm and soul. Well, I, was, I know. I was always under the assumption that Bobby Brown sang that song <laughs> rather yeah, than just talked rather it. Rather than spoke it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean. I don't like Victor, and that's kind of one of the reasons, because I know that he thinks he's one of those, like, soulful, cool dudes, mm -hmm. but he's just not. Hey. Um, next Sorry. up is Emma. Emma is doing oh, Revolution like by Tracy Chapman. OK. Don't you know we're talking about the revolution song? Like a spot. Two people going to find us and think they're sure. Cause finally the tables are starting to turn Talking about a revolution Cause finally the tables are starting to turn Talking about a revolution, hold on Do you know what I love? I think clap for that one, yeah. Do you know what I love, Monique? I've just realised that if one of these guys does come out of the house and gets a record deal, there's actually a chance you might have to interview them. Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, my God! What don't do you think do of that? She's, got, she's got a good do. voice. I mean, she, had, she struggled yeah, with words. Yeah, I heard her sort of a nice little husky sexy thing. What I don't like about things like that is the moment mm -hmm. is the painful thing, yep. not her voice. It's two people in the Big Brother house singing Talking About a Revolution by Tracy Chapman. That, to <laughs> me, that, to me, just makes me want to end my life. But That's yeah, why I love this nice. show. OK, nice. well, listen, uh, her and Michelle have both got demos. Can't get hold of Michelle's demo. We'd love it, so if you've I'd got it, please it. get it to us. But we have got Emma's here, Emma Greenwood, messing in the studio, own song. Is that the name of it, or is it her just messing in I'm the studio? I'm not entirely sure. I think both. Okay. It might be eponymous, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, we, in fact, we, we want to play this. Um, whether or not we play it is up to you, not you. 
because that would be too dangerous. Uh, if you want to hear more of Emma singing, email us. The address is bbb at channel4.com. And we will. Finally, early days, but who do you want to win? Uh, Shell. Yeah. Oh, Shell, really? Shell. Because uh, she's actually quite intelligent. Mm -hmm. I like the way she carries herself as well. Okay, cool. And even though she likes to have a little bit of a gossip or whatever with Vanessa, she's actually a nice person. And I don't think she's trying to mess with anyone's heads, which is what I think everyone else is Nikita, everybody, thank you very much. OK, more from Nikita in just a minute. And in Corby River, first, a quick recap of today's news. At 11.47 this morning, Ahmed uh, flew into a plate-smashing fury after Big Brother played a car alarm to wake up the housemates. After venting his anger, he went to shed some tears and, uh, on his lonesome in the snug. <laughs> and finally, at 2.25 this afternoon, the housemates very amusingly decorated one of the cameras. Okay. Uh, today's cool BBLV quite simply is who do you think is the biggest ay, 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 backstabber in the house? Let's go to the line not right now. First up, Alex from Hull. Hello, Alex. Hi, Dermot. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? You I'm are fine sounding evening. very happy in Hull. <laughs> Hello? But not, any, but not anymore. Uh, what do you think, Alex? Okay, I think that Vanessa mm -hmm. and my reason is because, you know, when her and Dan were in the garden the other day? Who in the garden? Her and Dan. Yep. And then um, they were bitching about Michelle and the fact that um, she and Stuart, you know, Michelle and Stuart were together. Yeah. And then, then Michelle went to see Big Brother in the diary room. Uh-huh. Uh, Big Brother asked her if any of the other girls mind. And when Michelle confronted Vanessa, Vanessa said, personally... Not a problem. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Good morning, good morning. So, is Vanessa a backstabber? Yes. Discuss. I, think... I know you think she is, I'm just asking. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think that her and um, Shell talk about, uh, sort of, they don't care if people hear them when they're sort of gossiping, but then it's the meaner stuff they say quieter. They don't think they're gossiping, they think they're actually just being quite open, just having mm. a normal discussion. Just, having a chat. Just, yeah. just, just with each other and no one else around. Yeah. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Thanks a lot, Alex. You're welcome, bye. 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 Lovely call. <laughs> um, Peter from Belfast. Hello, Peter. Hello, Dermot. Did Ziggy top of you? You. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they made me come over there. And, uh, what's, what's, what's your point? Well, I think it's got to be Emma, basically, because I didn't like the way she um, t made up after the argument with Ahmed and then uh, just sort of went around uh, trying to do everything just before the nomination. Yeah, interesting. She did apologise to him right before the nomination. Right, yeah. I think she probably was genuinely upset, as she said about 12 times. But um, <laughs> it's quite sneaky. But then they're all playing a game, aren't they? Uh, Dr Rob. I, I don't think she's bright enough to be playing a game, actually. <laughs> Oof, Dr <laughs> Rob. Makita slaying into the guests. Um, I defend them, but I've got to get to the next caller. Joanne from Wellington. Hello, Joanne. Hi, Dermot. Where's Wellington? It's in Telford. Oh, nice. OK, um, who do you think? <laughs> um, I think it's... Um, I've actually got two, Michelle and Marco. Michelle and Marco, OK, why? Um, because every time I've sort of watched it, they're always sitting in a little corner, rolling their eyes at everybody and gossiping about everyone. Yeah. But then uh, they sort of go in and with the group and they start being all nicey nicey and all the rest of it. And... Brilliant. Michelle, I've got to wrap it up, but thank you very much. Good point. OK, that is your lot for today. Don't forget to join us tomorrow when we're offering you the chance uh, to choose a housemate's wake-up call for the first eviction this Friday. Be sure to watch uh, Big Brother's E4 on tonight with Russell. 7 o'clock on E4 and all the action from inside the Big Brother house tonight at 10 o'clock. We will see you tomorrow. Have a great night. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it.